I'm looking now across the river where my faith gone in inside. There's just a few. Stand here before you today, honored by the families requesting me to do this service for my dear brother uh, Philip Dowling. I'm so honored to have the opportunity to do so. I've only known Philip for the last seven or eight years to know him personally. I knew that he was a barber, a master barber, but I had no idea that he had owned his own shop since he was 20 years of age. He currently owns. Uh, uh, Phil's Creative Touch on Knight Avenue, and uh, that's where I get my hair cut. I go there to Mary for her to cut my hair. Uh, he was well respected by those who worked for him and worked with him, and uh, they said some great things about him uh, and their relationship uh, with him. Uh, Mary did tell me when they were downtown in the shop that they never knew what station they were going to be in when they came in the next morning, that Philip may have changed everything around and had everybody relocated. I guess that kept things interesting and that sounds just like something that he would, uh, he would do. Uh, he was an active member of AA. You know the problem that he had and praise God he uh, was able by the grace of God to lick that problem and then he was able to give help and assistance to a lot of other people who were struggling with addiction themselves and that's a tremendous blessing. I think more important than all of these things was the fact that Philip came to know Jesus as his Lord and Savior. While I was serving as 
transitional pastor at Pleasant Valley Baptist Church. I got to know Philip better and had the opportunity to visit uh, with him in his home several times. One morning, uh, Gail called me and said, I have been talking to Philip, and she said, I think he's ready to make a commitment to Christ. I went that day to his house and sat down with him at the Bible and shared the gospel with him, the plan of salvation and what he, he needed to do in order to be saved. And uh, uh, he allowed me to lead him in a prayer of confession and commitment uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ, acknowledging that he himself was a sinner, that Jesus was his only hope, and that he had died on the cross for him, for his sins, and was raised from the dead. He prayed that prayer with me. Then he came uh, immediately to a tent revival we were having in the field out behind Pleasant Valley facilities, sat on the back row, and when the invitation was given after the preaching, he made a beeline for me as I stood down front to receive or welcome anyone who might uh, come for any kind of decision, especially for profession of faith. He came requesting that he be baptized and be uh, may able to make a public profession of his faith. Because uh, of the fact that there were several stairs to climb to get up to the baptistry inside the church and then down into the baptistry and back up and out. And Philip was weak. At that time, Roy and Gail offered their pool as a place for me to baptize him. And on Sunday morning after our church service, we went directly to their house. And I had the joy and privilege of uh, baptizing him in their, their pool. And I thank God for those experiences and for uh, these opportunities that, uh, that I've had to interact with him. Uh, because each one of us preaches our own funeral in reality as we live our life, while we live our life. And because Philip was a child of God, I want to turn to the scriptures today for comfort, uh, to help us and comfort us in our time of loss. There are two absolutely certain uh, truths in scripture that I want to share with you this morning. The first one is, for the child of God... There is no possibility of ever being separated or ever being a loser, rather. There's no possibility of our ever being a loser. There's three reasons for that found in Scripture. First of all, death brings a fuller knowledge of all things. The Bible says, now I know in part, but then shall I know fully, even as I have been fully known. Can you imagine? Knowing in the manner that God has known us and having that fullness of knowledge. The Bible also says in the second place that death brings a face-to-face -face vision of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, now I see in a mirror dimly, but then face-to-face, face-to-face. In uh, Philippians chapter 1 and verse 23, the Apostle Paul had this to say concerning uh, the matter of, of, of our death. He said in verse 23, but I am hard-pressed between two directions, that is life and death, having uh, the desire uh, to depart and to be with Christ, for that is far much better. That is far better. And then also in 2 Corinthians, as he uh, writes there to the church at Corinth, he says concerning the matter of death, he said, Therefore, being always of good courage and knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. So we walk by faith and not by sight. We are of good courage, I say, and prefer rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. And so death not only uh, brings a fuller knowledge of all things and a face-to-face -face vision with Jesus Christ our Lord, but it also brings a freedom from all suffering. Philip suffered some in the latter years of his life. Thank God it was not, uh, not extended and not as intensive as some of us experienced. The Bible says in Revelation 21, 4, uh, be, let me read back up and read verse 3. It said, And I heard a, a loud voice uh, from the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is among men, and he will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and he, God himself will be among them. And then here it is, and he will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will no longer be any pain, death, or pain, or crying. The former things have passed away. 
And so I think about this and realize that uh, death uh, for the believer is a blessing. Listen to what the Bible says. Uh, and I heard a voice from heaven saying, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, so that they may rest from their labors, for their deeds do follow them. That word blessed means happy. To be congratulated are those who die in the Lord. The psalmist said, Precious in the sight of the Lord is his godly ones. Then there's one other truth that I want to say. In, in addition to for the child of God, there's no possibility of being a loser. For the child of God, there's no possibility of being separated from Christ. No possibility of our being separated from Christ because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. You remember when he came on the scene when Lazarus had died and Martha and Mary were grieving the loss of their brother and uh, Jesus said, your brother is going to live again. And she said, I know he will at the, at the end of the age, in the, in the last days. But Jesus said to her uh, in, in this passage, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he dies, even if he dies, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Now, Philip died, and you and I are going to die one day, but he did not die, and we will not die as Christians in the sense of being separated from God. We will never be separated from him. Uh, I remember reading about a Mrs. MacDonald who had a child that was, that was nearing death with cancer, and one day he asked his mother, Mama, what is it like to die? And she said she gripped the sink with her hands and looked out the window and whispered a prayer. And God said to her, gave her these words to say. She said, son, do you remember when you were able to play outside and you played until it was almost dark and you came in so dirty and you, you got a bath and got cleaned up and we had supper? And she said, you would lie down on the sofa and go to sleep. And he said, yes, ma'am. And she said, do you remember where you were the next morning? He said, yes. She said, do you know how you got there? He said, it was, he was in his bed, of course. And he, she said, how, do you know how you got there? He said, no, no ma'am, I don't. He said, she said, your father would come and pick you up with his strong arms and take you from where you were to where you were supposed to be. She said, that's what death is like, and that's true for the child of God. He comes and takes us and carries us where we need to be. Uh, so the second reason that we are, are ne never be separated from God is because he makes us more than conquerors, more than conquerors. I'm not sure that I know how you can be more than conquerors, but he makes us super conquerors. In the book of Romans, chapter 8, uh, beginning in verse 35, the Bible says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword, just as it is written, for your sake we are being put to death all the day long. We were considered as sheep to be slaughtered. But in all these things, we are overwhelmingly conqueror through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, uh, nor powers, nor might, uh, height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And then there's a third a reason that we will never be separated from God, and that is that Jesus Christ is Lord of life and also Lord of death. The Bible says concerning this matter in Romans 14, the Bible says, For not one of us lives for himself and not one of us dies for himself. For, uh, for if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die... We die for the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the living and also of the dead. Now, I stand here today and say to you in light of these scriptures that I've shared with you this morning, and I pray that you will find them comforting to your, your heart and life. Uh, the most important thing in all of life, 
It is not our recreation or our work or our hobbies or even our family. The most important thing in all of life is to know Jesus Christ personally, to have a personal knowledge of him, a personal relationship with him. Uh, th that's the only thing that will last. Everything else will cease when we come to the point of death. That is the only thing that will, that will live on. How can we possibly know him and have a right relationship with him? Let me share with you briefly. The Bible says, first of all, we must come under conviction. Jesus said concerning the Holy Spirit, when he has come, he will convict the world concerning sin, concerning righteousness, and concerning judgment. Concerning sin because, uh, con concerning sin because you believe not on me, concerning righteousness because I go to the Father and you see me no more and he was the standard of righteousness. And he said concerning judgment because the prince of this world, that is Satan himself has been judged. And if he has been judged, then you and I are going to face judgment. In fact, the Bible says it is appointed a man once to die and after that the judgment. So we must come under conviction concerning our sin and righteousness and judgment. And then secondly, we must repent of our sin. Jesus said to the religious people who were very religious but lost, he said, Yea, but I say unto thee, except ye a man repent, he shall likewise perish. In Luke's gospel, he said that, uh, he said that twice uh, in verse 3 and verse, uh, uh, verse 5 of the 13th chapter of the book. And then when, Paul, when Peter had preached on the day of Pentecost, and told the people that were present that they were responsible for killing their Messiah. They were responsible for his death. And the Bible says literally they were cut to the quick in their hearts. And they said to the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And uh, Peter said uh, to the two and the rest of the apostles uh, to them, he said to them, repent. And each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ because of the forgiveness of your sins. Now, repentance is, uh, is a, a turning around. It is a, an about face. It's going in the opposite direction, a change of the way of life, a direction that we are going in. It is to turn from sin and turn to God. And when you have a desire to turn from sin and turn from God, turn to God, the Holy Spirit comes in and enables you to do that. It is a change of uh, mind and attitude that will result in a change of lifestyle, in a change of lifestyle, change of, of the direction that we go in the life we live. The next thing is we must trust in Jesus Christ and in him only as our uh, Lord and Savior. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no man comes to the Father except by me or through me. And when you think about that and realize that, this is important. The Bible also says, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven whereby a man may be uh, saved. In Acts 16, 31, when the Philippian jailer thought all the prisoners had escaped as a result of the earthquake that had shaken open the doors and loosened the stocks that were on their feet, and he was about to kill himself, and Paul cried out to him and said, do yourself no harm, we're all here. The Bible says he asked for a light, and he came and fell trembling at the feet of Paul and Silas and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And he, they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, and your household. So the final thing is trusting in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, publicly confessing him to be our Lord and our Savior. The Bible says that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved, not may be saved, but shall be saved. So the important thing is that uh, is turning from being convicted of our sins, repenting of our sins, and trusting in Jesus Christ only as our Savior, uh, allowing him to become the Lord of our life, publicly professing that faith in him. And that's what Philip did when I baptized him. He, uh, 
uh, he pr pr professed publicly his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me encourage you, don't wait. If you don't know Jesus today, there's no better time than now. In fact, the Bible says, behold, now is the time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Now is the time. Today is the day of salvation. When I think about that, I think about that you as a family, I believe Philip would want me to share with you the words of Jesus, and I want to close with this in prayer uh, and, and a word of prayer. Uh, the disciples were told by Jesus that he was going to be taken away from them, and uh, they loved him, and they grieved, and they were grieving sorely uh, because of the fact he was going to be taken from them. And Jesus said to them in John 14, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and bring you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. I have a feeling when Philip uh, opened his eyes wide open and looked up, the other morning, Monday morning, I think Philip saw a light, and he went toward that light. And he's not with us today, but we haven't lost him because we know where he is. And what a difference that makes in terms of the comfort that we have. What if he had not made that profession of faith? What if he had not accepted Christ? What if we didn't know? Today would be a totally different scene different set of circumstances and a different service pray with me please father as we come we come realizing you are our father that you love us and care for us and you've made it possible for us to be saved for us to have a relationship with you for us to be able to go home to live with you when we finish our journey in this life and father i thank you for the dowling family and i pray your blessings on every member of this family I thank you, Father, for the friends uh, that are here today, and I pray that your blessing may be upon each one of us. And I pray that as we go from here to the cemetery, that we'll go, Father, uh, grieving our loss, but celebrating Philip's, Philip's winning. I thank you for that. Bless us now. And bless every person present with your presence and your, your uh, love in Jesus' name. Amen.